In custom car audio, there are many times that we need to add a point within the wiring that can be connected and disconnected. Imagine, if you will, a speaker that is directly mounted in a removable panel. We'd want to be able to easily disconnect that speaker wire so that we can remove that full assembly from the car. In the past on the channel, I've used this style of connector, which is common for hobby RC cars and happens to work great for car audio. But is there a better solution that is more designed for automotive use? Another common application in car audio is wanting to disconnect more than just two wires at a time. What if we could do substantially more? Enter these, the Deutsch style wiring harnesses. How are these used? and what are the advantages and disadvantages of this connector solution. Hey everyone, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's take a closer look. So to get things started, let's first talk about everything that we're going to need in order to use this style of connector. First off, a wire stripper. I would hope that you would have one of these anyway if you're planning on doing this kind of work. Next up, some flush cutters. These come in handy if you strip too much insulation off of a wire before inserting it into these terminals. We'll talk more about that shortly. Next, some needle nose pliers. This works well for disassembling and assembling these connectors. And now we get into some of the more specialty tools. You're going to need one of these specialty crimpers. These particular crimpers here, you'll notice they say closed barrel terminals. And that's because these are for the closed barrel terminal type. Right off the bat, I wanna to recommend to you guys and point out that these style of connectors do have an open barrel style. That separate style is less expensive and can be crimped with a more traditional crimper, but I find that this closed barrel style is far, far better. In my opinion, if you're going through the effort to add one of these high quality connectors, you wanna get yourself the right crimper, and I recommend getting one of these. Another thing worth noting on this crimper is they come in different crimp sizes, and you can see this one here says size size 16, and that's because we're going to be using the size 16 contacts, which also means that we're going to be using 16 gauge wiring for our speaker wire and primary wire if we're doing a much larger connection style that has more conductors. Now that doesn't mean that you can only use these connectors if you're using 16 gauge wire. If you are using a larger wire size, there are different series of this style of connector that will allow you to use that larger wire size. But again, you wanna make sure you get the right crimper and you plan out for the right barrel sizes depending on the wiring you're using. Next up, I definitely recommend that you also get yourself one of these specialty insertion and extraction tools. This is made specifically for being used with these style of connectors. We'll talk about this more later. And of course, you're going to also need the connectors themselves. Now, what's unique about these connectors is you can buy each of the pieces that make them up individually. You can even get the little pins separately. You can order all of this a la carte but if you're just getting started in this, I definitely recommend getting yourself a kit because it's going to have everything you need to make each of these different connector sizes. And there's different kits out there. So this kit here, it's a 64 piece kit, but if we open it up here, it basically allows us to make eight connections that feature two wires. So there's eight of this style, eight of that style there, and then all the associated pieces we need. Whereas this kit here, it's a little bit different. It allows us to make one of each different conductor size. So you can see that there's a two-way set, a three-way, four-way, six-way, eight-way, and 12-way. To make life easier for you guys, I have links down in the video description to all of these items. So to understand how these all go together, let's take a quick look at everything disassembled. First, we have the pins or the contacts. And again, I recommend to you guys that you get this closed barrel style that use this specialty crimper. There are male pins and there are female pins. Once we connect wire to these and these are fully mounted in their housing, you can see that these make a connection just like that. You'll want to remember that the male pins get mounted inside of the female receptacle, and the female pins get mounted inside of the male plug. It's worth noting on both the receptacle and the plug, there is this rubber gasket type material on the back side. Once you connect the wiring to each of the pins, that's what you'll be pressing that assembly through. You'll also notice that there's another gasket type material that is on the male plug, and this can come off of the plug, which is a little bit confusing. You might wonder to yourself, why does that come off so easily? But this will be held in place by one of these wedge locks. 
The purpose of these wedge locks is they prevent the removal of the pin with the wire attached once they are inserted into either the receptacle or the plug. And a good way to remember which is for which is remember that with the plug, you're going to want to keep that little gasket on there. And this has more of a flange to it that's going to help keep that gasket attached. Now, based on the amount of conductors you plan on using, these connections can look a little bit different. On this one here, this is the 12 conductor style that I've been showing you guys. But if we take a look at something like the three conductor style here, you can see that the pieces look a bit different but overall their function is the same. So next up here, let's run through an example of wiring one of these connectors. And for this example, we're gonna be using one of the two conductor versions to do a typical speaker wire disconnect. Now for our speaker wire, we're using this cord speaker wire from our show sponsor, New Concepts, and a quick shout out to them. New Concepts has a wide variety of different speaker wires, but also power wires and signal distribution wires that you need for your next car audio system. Along with all the different wiring, they also have power distribution accessories so that you can completely wire your custom car audio system. To learn more about New Concepts, check out those links down in the video description. So first off here, we're going to strip the insulation from our wire, and these barrels actually have a small little hole in them that you can see right there and that small little hole allows us to verify that the wire is deep enough inside of the barrel connector. If you strip away a little bit too much insulation, that's where the flush cutters come in handy to trim away some of that extra wire so that this slits nice and flush with the end of the barrel touching the insulation like that and we can see our wire inside the hole. To crimp these, we simply slip the barrel inside of our specialty crimp tool, make sure our wire is pushed in good and deep and then squeeze the crimper and that gives us our crimped barrel connection. Now notice, although we have a positive and a negative connection here, we've crimped the same barrel style to both connections here on this same wire. And these are our female contacts, so these are going to be going into the male plug connection. Adding the wire with the crimped contact into our connector is very easy to do. Simply push them through the gasket until we hear the clicks. There we go. So we have those contacts fully seated into the connector and this is where this specialty tool comes in handy. I could take this end here that looks kind of like a flat screwdriver and if I push it down in the connector here, I can reach this little tab that allows me to disconnect these wires if need be and remove them from the connector. We'll talk about this other end here that is more unique and what it does in just a second. Once we're happy with our wire layout here, we'll take one of the wedge connectors and we're going to push this into the connection. And do note that these connectors have a direction that they need to be put in. You obviously wouldn't be able to put it in like that. It's going to block out those pins. We wanna go this direction here and press it down in. If you did need to remove this wedge lock, you can see that there's a small little undercut clearance right there that again, you can use this tool to pry it away and pop it out. So here we have it, the male side plug connector is now complete. So now we need to assemble our female receptacle and this time we're gonna be using those male pins which I've already connected. And again, we really wanna make sure that we pay attention to which side we put this in when we assemble this. That way we have positive connected to positive and negative connected to negative. It's worth noting on these larger receptacles that they do have a number next to each pin location. That way you can keep better track of which wire is which I just think it might be a little bit harder for you guys to see on camera, but it is on this gray edge around the outside. All right, so in my case here, I've got the wires lined up the way I want them. And again, I'll just push them in. Once the male pins are fully seated, they'll be sticking out slightly inside of the connector there. And you're not gonna be able to pull them and remove them unless you were to use the install tool to pry away that small little finger on the inside. So now we're gonna drop the wedge lock down into the connector, and this is going to be a little bit more difficult to show on camera. But if you look at this from the side here, this side here that has more of these bumps on it, that's going to go closer to the contact side inside there. So you can see I've kind of got it lined up, and I'll use my install tool here to just seat it down the rest of the way into the connector. So again, now that it's fully seated, if I needed to, I could remove it using this little hook that I can get into that little notch there and pull out that green connection. 
But with the wedge lock fully seated in there, now we can make our final connection and test this out. So how does this conductor perform? Well, let's do a quick little resistance test. So right now I'm measuring just through my test probes themselves. You can see we've got them connected to each other and we have 0.2 ohms. And now with them connected through the harness, we've got 0.2 ohms. So this is a good solid stable connection. Now some of the disadvantages of this Deutsch style connector, first off, these are definitely a bit more pricey. They're a little bit more complex with more parts that you're going to need. And with that said, it's definitely more important that you use a particular wire size. In this case, like I mentioned for these ones I have here, I'm going to want to use 16 gauge speaker wire or primary wire. In comparison with this style of connector that I've shown previously on the channel on these, you can use really any different wire size that you would like to use as long as it doesn't exceed the current handling capability of these connectors. And with that said, these definitely can handle more current as well. So if you're looking to quick disconnect something like a subwoofer, I would probably still use these, but there are some other more advanced style of the Deutsch connectors that you can use that have a higher current handling capability. With that said though, there are far more advantages of the Deutsch style connector. First of all, like we mentioned, this style of connector really only gives us those two different conductors, and with the Deutsch style connector, we have a lot more options. Another advantage is let's say that we wanted to disassemble this particular connector here, but still use the same wires and let's say that we wanted to go to something like a four conductor plug, we could easily do that and add additional wiring without really needing to modify any of the original wiring. Another advantage of the Deutsch style connector is these really can't be yanked apart. This style of connection here over time could potentially get loose if there is, you know, some strain on the wiring since the way they work is they are just pulled apart like that. With this, you have this little locking finger here that must be depressed in order to pull these apart. Another advantage here of the Deutsch connector is these do have some degree of weatherproofing with all of the different rubber flanges that are on these in comparison to this style connector. But to me, the number one advantage of using these Deutsch style connectors is the fact that you're going to be crimping the barrels onto the wires to terminate them as opposed to having to do soldering. I find that oftentimes when I'm using these, I'm adding them after I've already ran the wiring in the vehicle, which means I need to set up a little workstation and properly protect the vehicle in order to do the soldering so that I don't you know, drip any solder onto the vehicle surfaces or somehow melt something. It's just kind of a pain to do in comparison to using these where I could just trim the wire and then simply add that crimped connection. Another massive advantage of the Deutsch style connector if you see this little profile here, that's because they actually make a special mounting solution that you can use to mount these connectors into the vehicle. So you guys tell me, would you rather have a connector that's potentially vibrating around and hitting something and making noise in a vehicle, or would you rather have a connector that could be securely mounted onto a panel and you could leave it mounted onto the panel, disconnect this when needed, mount it into that secure spot and have that solution. So question of the episode for you guys, do you see yourselves using these style of connectors in the future? And if so, what kind of application could you see yourself using them for? If you're new here to my channel, Car Audio Fabrication, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and you can check out some of the related videos here on screen. Don't forget you can find these at the links down in the video description. And next time you need wiring and wiring accessories, be sure to check out our show sponsor, New Concepts. A big thanks to them along with Juan, Jerry, Steven, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for for making these videos possible and thank you for tuning in and watching.